When you design your concrete structures, you have to make sure you use smart design. What's smart design? Well, it's dealing with your weaknesses and emphasizing your strengths during the design process. So what's concrete's biggest weakness? Easy, right? It cracks. It has a low tensile strength. Whenever you see a crack in concrete, you know that right there, it's exceeded the tensile strength capacity of the material. Now, concrete is pretty strong in compression. However, in tension, it's weak. It only takes one tenth of the load to fail it in compression in tension. That means it's one tenth as strong in tension as it is in compression. And that's why you see cracks all over the place in concrete. Is it possible to design concrete without cracking? It's tough. You're like, what? What are you talking about? It's tough. The Romans, right? They designed concrete that's lasted 2000 years. Yeah, they did. They used some very, very smart designs. If you zoom in and look, the Romans loved arches, okay? They used them all of the time. And one of the great things about an arch is it does a great job distributing the load and it keeps everything in compression. Since concrete's so strong in compression, then that's playing to its strengths. Now, arches are totally awesome, but they only work in certain situations. Watch my next video where I explain what those are and when you can use arches. But modern concrete designs are obsessed and all about beams, and there are very, very good reasons for them. And the Romans loved beams as well. They would use them on some of their most important structures. And if you zoom in, what did Romans do for beams? Well, they made them very, very, very deep. So why would you do that? Well, if I have a load on top of it and if I make it extremely deep, then that load as it distributes in it, it will have some tension, but the deeper I make it, the less tension I will have inside of my member. If I get enough tension where I cause a crack in this unreinforced system, it would be failure. It'd be game over, end of the life of the concrete. Ugh horrible, right? So if our beam though is deep enough, then we can creep the tension low and we can make the concrete not crack. Oh, is this practical? I talk about it in this video. Check it out. Modern designs are a little bit different. We're expecting the concrete to crack. We put reinforcement inside of it though in the spots where we think the cracks are gonna happen. So once the crack does occur, it's not failure, it's just a step in the life of the beam. These cracks are kept very small by the reinforcement, and as long as you maintain them, your structures will be awesome. Maintaining? I talked about maintaining concrete structures in this video. Check it out. But the benefits of reinforcing are that they help keep our cracks small. Also, they will increase your ultimate strength of your members by six to eight times. They have huge benefits. Also, they will give your concrete ductility. What's that? Ductility is the able to bend, but not break. That is extremely useful for extreme events like earthquakes and huge winds and bomb blasts and unexpected events. You want your concrete structures to save people's lives. And those reinforcement, that's one of their main jobs is that ductility. Now I've given a whole series of videos on how to design concrete structures with reinforcement. Check it out at this playlist, Simple Reinforced Concrete. Let me give you some advice. For elevated concrete, you wanna place your rebar close to where you expect to see tension or where you expect to see cracks to occur. You want the rebar between two to three inches. If you're in an extreme environment where you're gonna get lots of de-icing salts, you want more cover at about three inches. If you're not gonna expect a lot of de-icing salts, then two inches is a typical number that most people use in their designs for their cover or their spacing between the surface of the concrete and the surface of the rebar. Here's a picture of an elevated slab and where we wanna put that rebar close to where we expect to see those cracks occur. But if you have a slab on ground, you want the rebar at the center of the member. What? 
Yeah, the center. Because we don't, don't expect tension to be anywhere, but inevitably that concrete ends up cracking. So you want that rebar to be there to hold the whole member together. Now, this is critical that we get our rebar at the right location. And to do that, we're gonna use something called a chair. This is shown as a metal chair, or we have a plastic chair that will hold that concrete from the surface at the exact height that you want it. Very, very, very important. Also, you wanna tie your reinforcing together extremely tightly. So as you're pouring the concrete that they don't move and you do not wanna let your rebar go to the bottom of your slabs. Oh my gosh, that is the worst ever. You might as well not have put rebar on the concrete at all if that happens. Also, to reduce cracking, it is a great idea to keep your rebar as close together as you possibly can. Now, you don't wanna get them too close though, because you wanna be able to get your rock in between them. So typically two to three inches is as close as you can possibly get them. I know that sounds extreme and crazy, but it will help minimize cracks. Now, it can mean a lot of labor unless you use something that can help you get these bars close together without humans having to tie every single one. And a awesome tool to do this is a welded rebar mat. They come to your job site as huge sheets of rebar together. You pick them up, put them down, they're unbelievable. Now they are different, they are deformed, so they will grip onto the concrete much better than a welded wire mesh. Welded wire mesh, I am not a fan of. Not a fan of it at all. I like the deformed bars of the welded rebar mats. They help keep our cracks smaller in our concrete. Fibers are also an amazing tool. They're a reinforcement you can put randomly all over your concrete and again, help keep your cracks small. You have to be a little careful though, because you need quite a bit of energy, quite a bit of work to get a smooth surface on your concrete if you use fibers. Here's an example of some beams that we cast and you can see the fibers, we had to put them on a vibrating table. We had to really work them hard to again, get some surface on there, get some cream at the top and not see those fibers. Now in summary, there are lots of design tricks to help minimize cracking and help give you a long lasting concrete. The ones we talked about today are using deep members. Also placing your reinforcement near the tension face using small and closely spaced bars together and fibers are an awesome tool that we need to be using to help keep our cracks small inside of our concrete. Use all of these together to make super smart designs for long lasting concrete. Hey, if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at concrete.tyler. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and also leave me a comment about do you have any other cool tips, any other cool design tricks to help make long lasting concrete. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.